Okay, folks, it has come to my attention that someone clipped a minute out of my live stream last night, which ran for about two hours, and uh, posted that for Ethan Van Skyver to see, and uh, Ethan's got some uh, return comments on that. Um, I, I hate the fact that I'm not on Twitter anymore uh, because I got kicked off a while back, and uh, it means I'm unable to participate in these particular discussions. Now, I am on Gab, and I know that Ethan has a Gab account as well that I wish he would use more often, but I know that the uh, Gab population there is not quite as robust as is on Twitter as far as comic books go, so it's not really the most um, productive use of his time, I guess, to do double duty. But I do post there, and so if he ever wants to have a conversation with me about any of this stuff, he's more than welcome to. Um, so I just wanted to give my full remarks from the live stream last night, because one minute really doesn't sum up everything that I had to say. Uh, there's only 15 minutes of material, and uh, once you've heard that, then I'd like to respond to what Ethan has written in the tweet here. So, um, so please do watch the next 15 minutes in which I comment exclusively on the Comicsgate drama and the, the beefs between him and Eric July, and then uh, we'll come back and I will talk some about Ethan's comments here. So please do watch. I'll see you in 15 minutes. Uh, Ben three or Ben thirty one UK. Ethan's a drama farmer douchebag. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, he's he's definitely been henpecked during this past month more than more than usual. I mean, this is this has been a bad month for him. And and you know, well, let me get to that in a second. Let me catch up with the with the tweet with the uh, let's see. Ben, well, uh, oh, it's just basically uh, Garfield's uh, agreeing with Ben. Here is what I, I, I have to say about Ethan Van Skyver's attitude towards this whole Eric July thing. I do feel like he has overreacted somewhat. And the reason I say that is because what Ethan wants is the ability to have anybody he wants on his live streams and be, to be able to talk to them about whatever they want to talk about. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, just give me the freedom to talk to whoever I want to talk to and to, you know, talk about whatever I want to talk about. And if it's favorable to this person, great. If it's unfavorable to this person, whatever, you know, just basically let the chips fall where they may. And the only thing that Eric July was really saying in his night letter that, that Ethan Van Skyver keeps referring to on that phone, on that phone call or not phone call, but, t uh, uh, text, <coughs> He was just basically saying, it's like, look, you know, I've been I've been kind of using kid blo kid gloves when it comes to people coming on my channel and referring to you. If you're not going to do the same for me, well, then I'm not going to do the same for you. And so I just want you to know that. So, you know, you can either, you know, start kind of, you know, building the same hedge around me that I've built around you, or I'm going to drop the hedge that I've been building and just let the chips fall where they may. And, you know... I don't see why why Ethan would wouldn't look at that and just say, "Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't realize that you had been holding back. I didn't realize that you had been holding back other people from talking crap about me." And you never really needed to do that. And I, while I appreciate it, you know, feel free, feel free to have the same freedom that that uh, to talk about whatever it is I want. You know that the same freedom that I have, feel free to have that because that's that's really all that Eric July was saying is like if you're going to be exercising your freedom in that way, then I'm going to feel the same way to exercise my freedom in that way. And I don't see really the problem with that as a matter of principle. So I, I feel like uh, I feel like Ethan overreacted in that sense, and he's also overreacting in the sense that you know if Eric July has his phone number, I, I can only assume that he gave it to Eric at some point. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if he's saying that uh, Eric July somehow found out his phone number and then texted him instead of DM'd him, and that was some sort of breach of protocol, I I, I suppose. I mean, that, that, that to me is something to say, look, I don't like it when people call me or text me directly on my phone. I prefer to keep my comic book business 
through DMs and through social media accounts and through all that. So please don't don't contact me in this particular way. That was that was basically all that needed to happen then. But uh, I mean, I don't I don't see why he's looking at that as being something sinister. Where where you know, if I had his phone number, I mean, yeah, I'd probably need to lose it. <laughs> Rather than rather than contact him through that, but I'll, I would just basically expect a strongly worded text in in, in return saying like like look you know I uh, although I gave you this number so that you could reach me in case of an emergency or something you know let's please not use it to to to, to do shop talk uh, unless it's an absolute kind of emergency or something um, yeah I mean otherwise if if he just texted ethan out of the blue and and ethan had never given him his number then you know i'd be like how did you get this number and you know i prefer you not call it but it didn't seem like that so i guess ethan must have given him the number at some time and maybe maybe when they were at a convention together or maybe when when uh they had i don't know had had, had met on one of their live streams and and just exchanged that information and then he, he just seems overly shocked that eric july would have used that as, as a direct line of communication when when uh, eric july has said that you know i expect people to, to try and contact me directly rather than air out things in public i it just it just seemed like an overreaction to me uh jay ulysses ethan 30 plus years on a comic was fired with when dc when he was one of the top artists yeah yeah i mean he and, and he was uh, silenced when he was there. I mean, there were people telling him that, you know, we don't want you talking on this particular stream. We don't want you doing this or that. And he chafed under that. So I can understand where the emotional reaction comes from. It's like, look, I didn't, I didn't become an independent comic creator so that other people could tell me what to say. But at the same time, all Eric July was saying was, if you're going to say whatever you want, I'm going to say whatever I want. And, and that to me is just saying, hey, I expect the same freedom that you expect. So where's the real reason to have beef over that? It's like all he's doing is saying, okay, well, yeah, I just want you to know I was treating you with kid gloves here before. Not going to do that if you're not going to do the same for me, you know, and, and we'll just let the cards fall where they may. And I would have thought that Ethan's response to that would have been, okay, fine, you know, Glad that we each enjoy the same freedom within our own spheres to to say what it is that we actually think and feel. I mean, I, I think that was all going to happen anyway. So I don't know why that had to be. I, I don't know why that had to spiral out of control into this. And I really think where where Ethan crossed the line was like revealing this text and saying, you know, here is where you know I got threatened, etc. And and yeah, it's a threat in the sense of. You know, I'm not going to treat you as well as I have been before if you don't start treating me better than you are now. But, okay, you know, can, can you look at your own behavior and say, okay, have I have I treated... Yeah, I, obviously, I'm not treating him the way he wants to be treated. Am I willing to do that? And if so, am I willing to be treated the same way that I am treating him? I, I mean, it's just kind of a, it, it's just kind of a matter of uh, consistency there. Michael Dietzsche, since Ethan did a cover for Eric, I can only assume they had an open channel to talk. Very, yeah, very good. I, I, I'd forgotten all about that. Jay Ulysses says, Ethan said he didn't give the number to him, and the number is only used by his close family. So, I mean, that yeah, it may be a little intimidating if, you know, all of a sudden somebody is uh, calling you and saying, hey, you know, we've got a problem. Uh, Luster Dog, why send the night letter in the first place? Well, I guess Eric July just had an issue with how he was he felt he was being treated on Ethan's channel. Uh Jay Ulysses says, why beef? Sounds like Eric July was threatening him, telling him, oh, why beef? Sounds like Eric July was threatening him, telling him he would go after him and dox Ethan if he said anything more about his comic. I don't think he threatened to dox Ethan. I think he he, he was just basically saying that, okay, you know, there's people out there who don't like Ethan Van Skyver, and he'd be willing to give them a platform just as Ethan was willing to give the people who don't like Eric July a platform. It's like, well, turnabout is fair play. I mean, if you if you are going to take that tactic yourself, you shouldn't be surprised if somebody warns you in advance, hey, I'm going to take the same tactic. Now that never I don't I don't think that ever really I don't think that ever really was a threat of, you know, I'm I'm definitely going to have on people 
who are going to attack you. You know, I'm I'm going to try to sink your channel. It didn't come across that way. It came across more of, you know, I've had this hedge of protection of, uh, about you because I thought I needed to. If that's not the case, I'll just drop that and we'll just, you know, be on the same playing field. I, I really didn't take it to be that malevolent. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like how people are taking the comment that Shane Shane Davis made about Bond Coleman. I just I just recently found about uh, found out about this, and I saw uh, Shane Davis's uh, live stream where he was talking about the remarks he made about Von Coleman, and how people are talking as if he threatened Von Coleman. And all he said was, you know, if you're coming out with a new comic, if you're a new guy coming out with a new comic, then you know maybe you shouldn't be talking crap about these subjects that don't even concern you you know that's not the smartest thing in the world to do that just sounds like good advice that doesn't say anything like you know shane was was talking about actually threatening the guy that's ridiculous i i i the only thing that i heard was you know maybe if your if your comic is up and coming and you want to uh promote it on people's channels and stuff stay out of their drama you know you don't have to get involved and to me, I mean, that just seems like that just seems like good advice. I mean, here, like he was trying to say, you know, hey, kid, I know I know it's it's real easy to get caught up in all of the drama crap that that swirls around us. Don't do that. Just focus on your comic and try and make your comic and the marketing for your comic the best that it can be, because that's what it's all about. In the end is, is how much can you sell? Um but as far as as him threatening the guy, that didn't it didn't sound like that to me at all, and so I it it reminds me of how Ethan is interpreting that night letter and saying you know wow this is a this is a massive threat because number one it came came through my personal channel when you know, Eric July might just not have a problem with with texting people on the phone maybe that's his standard modus operandi uh, and then. Um, the way that it was worded was worded, you know, ambiguously enough as as to, as not to say I'm going to be actively taking action against you, but really more to just to say, hey, you know, <coughs> the I I've been kind of protecting you on my channel, but you know, if you're not going to protect me on yours, then I, I don't feel obligated to do the same. So just letting you know. Uh it, it just seems like there was a, a little more malevolence being ascribed to it than there really should have been and that that's just how i felt with it let's see garfield garfield's bizarre adventure says everybody forgets that after eric sent the text evs and eric talked on the phone and supposedly hashed things out they live streamed together the next day ethan was fine for two months yeah yeah and that's that's true too he, he just felt like <coughs> i think he just saw himself as having been cowed um and it, I, I don't know, maybe it just affected his self-image in that, and he had to lash back out in some way in order to, uh, in order to say, hey, you know, this was not acceptable. And I, I kind of understand those feelings. I mean, I, I know what it's like to, you know, have said, have have not said what you wanted to say at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, to to have to have done it the way that he did, probably not the best way to go. All right. Uh, yeah, don't write any night letters. I'll, I'll try not to, Jay Ly Ulysses. You know, who, who can I threaten today? Threaten today. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, I, I really hope this, this whole thing dies down and uh, that it doesn't become like, you know, a, a constant ongoing theme because I, I hate to see some of the splits that I've already seen take place between some of the comic skaters and some of the, the uh, people who have been associated with Riververse. Like, uh, for example, I think there's something going on with, uh, with uh, maybe, maybe Rainy Strachowski. Like, is she like no longer doing the comic skate rounds? I haven't seen her on any of the shows lately. And uh, Narwhal has been absent. And I know there's some sort of, uh, problem that Ethan's been having to try and smooth over. Uh, I just, I, I hate to see this kind of thing going around. There's no, there's no real reason to take sides. Uh, everybody can still share in the same pie and, and, and succeed out there. And whoever's got the best comics is ultimately, I hope going to get 
the most money. So we'll we'll see how that goes over time. So anyway, yeah, thank you very much. And you know, one of the things I do have to get is a uh, Comics Gate hat one of these days. I, I am just waiting for, I guess, <clears throat> Ethan's next campaign where I'm, I'm going to purchase something and then I will purchase a hat at the same time. I was going to wear a Ripperverse hat since it's the one comic book related uh, thing I, I, I had, but I didn't want it to go look, looking like a statement of loyalty. <laughs> You know, like I, I'm on Team Ripaverse. It's like, no, no, I'm just basically that's my one comic book affiliated hat, and it'll be a while before I get a Comic Skate one. Uh, Luster Dog says, This is normal for Comic Skate going back to 2017. There's always been infighting. Yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds like it. Um, so, uh, yeah, that reminds me. I think it was, I think it was Captain Chokeout I was, I was talking to, and I was saying, Why is it that y'all can't get together and, and, uh, create uh, a shared universe where everybody is contributing their creations and such. And he's like, Mike, you got to understand behind the scenes, we all hate each other, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is almost showing that's, 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 that's kind of showing around these days. Okay. Let's see. Now that you've heard everything that I've had to say, let's take a look at what Ethan replied. He said, I saw this Mike's missing some context. Uh, that could be entirely true. I, I, of course, am not a member of the channel, so or his channel, so I am not able to see, for example, one of the things that he's uh, got for members only is the last live stream be that exists between him and Eric July. And apparently during that time, Eric July was talking about how he's making a list of names as far as people who I guess have offended against him. So that is definitely some context of which I have not been privy to. I just have um, you know, Ethan's account of it to go by. He all, uh, says that I also don't quite understand that tit for tat is relative in an angry person's mind. Someone who gets fired from his job and goes in with a shotgun might feel that's reciprocal, but he's acting way out of proportion. And I would understand that if the language in which he couched, and the language in which Eric July couched, his night letter, and I yes, I am using the air quotes behind the scenes. Um, if the language he used was such that it was like, I'm going to make a full on attack on you, that would be justified, but the language was not to that extent. I really feel like there's a lot of malevolence being read into the context of the of the text, possibly on account of the fact that it came as a text. And then, you know, I don't know what, what uh, transpired in the conversation, in the phone conversations that happened between uh, him and Eric July later on. But if, you know, that's stuff that, that we can't possibly be privy to at that point unless he recorded the phone conversation, and I doubt that he did. So as far as what it is that he means, in terms of just what we've seen, it just seemed like he was saying, you know, I'm a, I will behave towards you the way that you've been behaving towards me, which did not strike me on, on Ethan's part as being malevolently out to get Eric July. And so why that would then be turned around in, in, and interpreted as Eric July reciprocating by being out to get Ethan Menskyver did, did not come across to me. And so it really wasn't until Ethan released that text, which I know Eric July must have sent him expecting it to remain private, just as you wouldn't think that somebody had recorded your phone call and then was going to, you know, post your phone call on uh, the internet, then a text I would expect to be treated in the same way. So, yeah, I mean, that that to me was really the, the <laughs> what would you call it, the shot fired on Fort Sumter? <laughs> Um, that actually started the Civil War. So I don't, I don't know how, how best to, to put it other than that. It, it's when, that, that to me is when the major breach of etiquette took place. Not, not the calling of, or the texting him on the phone so much, because apparently if they had this working relationship together, then, you know, I assume they either called each other or texted each other when necessary in order to, uh, conduct business together, as uh, as is mentioned, as was mentioned in the video about how Ethan 
worked on a cover for Eric July. So if he felt that was an open line of communication that could be number one, immediate, number two, private, and didn't have to he, he didn't have to worry about Ethan missing it somewhere so that he knew he would, he would be able to contact Ethan. Uh, you know, if, if that was a breach of etiquette, then that should have been handled as a separate issue uh, and saying, hey, you know, this is this is not something that I think is cool as far as um, sending me a text as opposed to, you know, dealing the, with this through the normal channels of contacting me through DMs and such. I, I just feel like maybe it was that combination of you know, here is the implied threat, which, again, to me is just an appeal to consistency. You know, please treat me the way that I'm treating you or else I will treat you the way that you're treating me. Plus the means of communication, uh, which was obviously not what uh, Ethan favored. And then, of course, there was the matter of just, I guess, Ethan feeling like he had choked on his own words when talking with Eric July and trying to hash things out with him. Um, and, and not saying everything that he really wanted to say. You know, that those are the kinds of things... That, that's why when I look at this, you know, tit for tat is relative in an angry person's mind. Who's really the angry person here? I mean, Ethan's obviously angry that, uh, that Eric texted him, so it seems to me like that anger is coloring the content of Eric's text. But on the other hand, Ethan is right that I can't possibly be privy to all the context, and maybe if you look at that context, then Eric's text will appear much more angry than it does in just plain, you know, I want to say black print on white paper, but we're dealing with the digital age here. So, you know, it's a gray area for me. I, I, I just basically think that the proper course from this point forward ought to be de-escalation rather than escalation, because I don't really think the drama is necessarily doing anything good, especially if it ends up splitting the Comicsgate team, quote-unquote, into factions, uh, you know, like a pro-Eric July faction and an anti-Eric July faction. And kudos again to uh, to Ethan Van Skyver for, for taking the time out to protect Mike Barron from, uh, from that drama. I know Mike was going to uh, get on Ethan's drama stream at one point, and it's like, no, 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 this is this is not the room for you. <laughs> you might want to you might want to just sit this one out. Um, I think that that was probably much appreciated. Uh, but it's but also kudos to uh, to to Mike Barron. I assume that he was going to show some support for Ethan as well, and and uh, and, and it's nice to see that kind of loyalty. So um, so yeah, I mean, I'd I'd like to see everybody still be in a pleasant enough framework of mind that uh, more business endeavors, joint ventures, etc., might be considered in the future. I don't know if that, that bridge has been burned, but uh, hopefully cooler heads will prevail, and I think there's already some uh, fence mending as far as the other Comicsgate drama goes, and rather than uh, belabor the point any further, I will let you all go, but thank you for watching. Uh, I always like to just make sure all of my comments are pre presented in their totality, and golly, I do wish I were. <laughs> See, this is the only thing I miss about having been banned from Twitter, is that there are conversations going on on Twitter that I do not have access to anymore. And it's sad because I would love to be able to contribute. On the other hand, I could be a real jackass when I was on Twitter. <laughs> I, could, I could only think that maybe my being off of Twitter um, has helped me restrain some of my worst tendencies as, as a human being goes, because, boy, I could really unload the snark when I was out there. And and now um, I can still do so on Gab, and, and I also encourage everybody who's watching this, if you have not created a Gab account, please do so. Uh, and then uh, you're, you're welcome to follow me out there. Um, but do get it... Well... <laughs> do get exposed to the other side because you might wind up there yourself someday. So you may as well familiarize yourself. <laughs> it's, it's not a pleasant place when you start out. It gets more pleasant as you go when, when you block the right people. But, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, do, do uh, set up a Gab account because you never know when uh, Twitter is going to come for you next. I thought what I had said at the time was perfectly innocuous and uh, Twitter thought otherwise. So off I went, and uh, and now I don't get to take part in conversations like these, and that's that's the one thing that I do miss 
about Twitter is being able to get into direct contact with people who I would love to uh, chat with at times, and especially when I'm actually being included in the conversation without my knowledge and uh, have to find out about it later and say, okay, let me make sure that I am going to present everything in the proper context, and that way uh, we can all make sure we're on the same page. So uh, anyway, thanks again for listening, and uh, do subscribe if you haven't already, just so, <laughs> just in case I have more videos like this where I have to make sure that the record is set straight about the things that I've said, and uh, I will talk to you all later.